Americans are starting the summer worried about money, with almost 70% saying that the state of the US economy is bad. President Biden addressed some concerns in a new Wall Street Journal op-ed this week titled My Plan for Fighting Inflation. Biden writes the job market is the strongest since the post-World War II era with over 8 million new jobs, the fastest decline in unemployment on record and millions of Americans getting jobs with better pay. And business investment, he says, is up 20 percent and manufacturing jobs are growing at their fastest rate in 30 years. But it'll take more than op-eds to make Americans more confident about the economy. One thing Biden isn't talking about much right now, the direct payments that his administration made to Americans just last year, which is kind of surprising given how popular and effective they were. Nearly four in five voters supported the Biden administration's $1,400 payments last year. When you add up all the payments from the pandemic relief, most adult Americans got around $3,000. And starting in July of last year, the child tax credit sent a minimum of $250 to families every month. According to research from Columbia University, this resulted in the lowest poverty rate on record. Both child poverty and poverty among black people decreased by nearly half. And remember, that's during a pandemic that decimated the economy just a year before. So if these cash infusions work to reduce poverty in 2021, wouldn't more payments help reduce poverty this year too and every year? That's the idea behind a universal basic income. Give Americans direct cash payments. Some advocates say give it to everyone, regardless of income. Cities like Stockton, California, have piloted basic income programs, sending qualified residents payments every month. How far can these programs be expanded? And are they really the key to alleviating poverty in America or too utopian and too expensive an idea? My next guests have spent years making the case for a basic income, for a universal basic income in some cases, or UBI. Michael Tubbs is the former Democratic mayor of Stockton, California, who spearheaded a program to send payments to low-income res residents. And Otis Rowley is senior vice president for U.S. equity and economic opportunity at the Rockefeller Foundation. Thank you both for joining me. Uh, Michael, let me start with you. You spearheaded the basic income project in Stockton. What was the outcome there? What happened? And who got the money? Not everyone, right? Yeah, well, because we're doing a pilot, we weren't able to get to everyone, but we made sure that we had a representative sample that looked like the community. And what we saw was that the people spent money the way you and I and the viewers spent money on their kids, on maintenance, on, on, on car insurance, on, on groceries. We also saw that those who received the guaranteed income were two times more likely to go from part-time to full-time work than those who didn't and two times less likely to be unemployed. We also saw significant mental health impacts comparable to um, clinical trials of Prozac. So, so it, it's really interesting that, especially given the stat you raised, that in 2021, we had the lowest poverty rate on record during a pandemic because we gave people a little bit of an income floor that we're still having this conversation. We know what the, the data shows yes. that People need cash to get to work. People need cash for, for all types of health outcomes. And now it's just continuing to build the political will to do that. Otis, critics, of course, say that if you send people free money, they won't want to work. What is your response to that common criticism of basic income programs? Well, first and foremost, I just want to say, that, you know, the Rockefeller Foundation is a private foundation. We are nonpartisan. Um, and we are led by data and science. And I really appreciate that you led the conversation today with the data that show that Biden's plan is uh, the funds that came into Americans' uh, pocketbooks and wallets. Um, they, it was actually spent in a way that secured economic security, right? It really created opportunity for folks to have the wiggle room. Um, the U.S. Equity and Economic Opportunity Initiative that, that I lead at the foundation is focused in on low-wage workers and how do we really kind of create more economic security and mobility. And we know that the data tells us, thanks to pilots or Mayor Tubbs and others, the data shows us, right, that if folks have more cash, surprise, surprise, they're making the right decisions. We don't have to be paternalistic in terms of how the money should be spent because folks have the, the financial wherewithal once they have those dollars to make the right decisions for them and for their families. So we saw that with the stimulus funds. We see that with the guaranteed income. And so I, I try to just dispel the, dispel the misinformation with facts. And the data shows us the facts are solid and clear that if we infuse these, this capital into the pocketbooks and wallets of Americans, that they are going to make the right decision and it, and it actually creates more economic security and then and wiggle room for economic mobility. Michael, it's a bold idea. 
And we have a Democratic Party that's not known uh, for pushing bold ideas. Sorry to be blunt about your political party. What do you make of the Biden administration's handling of the economy right now, broadly, not just basic income, not just checks, but the kind of bold ideas that are going to lift people out of poverty, that are going to transform people's lives, and get going to get people to the polls? Yeah, no, I, I think we have to remember the context in which they came in, that much of the things we're seeing now in the economy, particularly as it pertains to inflation and, um, and shipping issues, are because of the tariffs of the last administration. And that I think, given that context, given the pandemic, no one's perfect, but the Biden administration has tried and has done a lot. They increased infrastructure spending, but also the child tax credit. It wasn't that the president didn't want to get it done. The president literally went on TV and said, this is my top priority. The issue is that there's a senator in West Virginia who fell prey to the tropes yes. and the stereotypes that so many people do about why people are poor and why people spend money. So, of course, there's room for improvement, but, but I think we can't lose sight of the fact that the, the, the president on, on most things have been very forthright about what he wants to see. And it's really about getting Congress and the Senate, and particularly one senator from West Virginia or a whole other 40-plus senators that are Republican to also get on board with an agenda that's good for all Americans, because not just Democrats who need money. The majority of Americans don't have enough money for one emergency, and that should be something that gets bipartisan support. We are very familiar with the blocking tactics of the senator from West Virginia on this show. Um, Otis, let me ask you this. Um, Joe Biden was bragging about deficit reduction recently as one of his big, you know, economic victories, which personally I think is a mistake. It's a Republican talking point. You're from a think tank that's not Republican or Democrats. Let me just ask you the practical question that's associated with a lot of this rhetoric. When people are talking about balancing the budget and deficit reduction and someone like yourself or Michael comes along and says, give people money directly, basic income, the comeback in D.C. in particular is how are we going to pay for it? <laughs> we, we, will, we will pay for it in the way that we have always paid for it, in, in terms of the, our tax revenues are our dollars that are coming back to, to us um, to help to ensure that we are competitive and secure. And I, I do feel, I mean, I know a lot of this conversation today is, is about um, Biden and at the national level, but I do feel like all politics are local, right? And, I, and the leadership that Mayor Tubbs showed, um, what the leadership that we often see is often at the local level and it builds itself up. You know, we have, we are investing in 12 places through our Rockefeller Opportunity Collective with, with mayors and county execs um, who, like Mayor Tubbs, are at the, at the vanguard. They are the, the tip of the spear in terms of looking for innovation. Um, they are bipartisan. We have Republican and Democratic mayors um, and county execs who are, who are leaders and recognize that if we're going to do something, um, it has to be now. Right? And, and that our dollars are best spent on us in a way that really creates real security and, mo and, and mobility. And I, I know that when you think about uh, those populations that have been hardest hit, not just through COVID, but historically, they are Black, they are Latinx, they are Indigenous folks. Um, and we saw, uh, we saw in those stats that you, uh, that you talked about at the very beginning of the show, that those populations were positively infected, uh, affected by by the stimulus dollars. And we know through the work of Mayor Tubbs and others and other cities, we've seen that seven of our 12 cities, we have mayors that are doing this guaranteed income, not because they think it's a good idea, but because the data shows that it's a good idea and they want to do what's in the best interest of their population. And I pray and hope that the state and national level, um, they will follow the leadership that these mayors are, are stepping up and, and, and moving forward in terms of putting their people first.